Watch that. That's a Michelle Obama arm about to happen. Chili is the quintessential American comfort food. It's comforting, easy, and delicious. It's elementary. Do you want to know what makes chili chili? I'm going to show you. I'm Keisha Harris. I'm an editor here at The Spruce Eats, and today I'm making chili three ways. Classic American, vegetarian, and green chili verde. We're gonna start with the classic American chili. This is the chili, when you've worked hard all day and you get home and you have the chili feels, all you need is like four ingredients and you've got the thing in the pot and done in like 20 minutes. So we're gonna take a little bit of vegetable oil just to get the onion sweated out. We don't wanna to put too much fat in there because there's so much fat in the meat. This is where the chili begins. Now listen, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about building flavors. It's not just about throwing stuff into the pot. It is about taking your time, listening, get that incorporated. We don't want color on it, we just want it to come out. And in order to help the water kind of come out and give a little flavor, I wanna start seasoning my stuff now. So just a little pinch of salt. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil because it's a little bit dry for me. And I'm also gonna add some pepper to this. Two teaspoons of chili powder. And this is called blooming. It's really important if you're like me and you have spices in your cabinet that have been there for a hot minute, you wanna wake them up. You want them to come alive, and then you see this beautiful color that's happening in here? That's all flavor. That's the foam that's happening at the bottom of the pan. Great. So now we've got, <coughs> see? That's the sign. That's the sign right there. And here's where the ground beef comes in. It's 80-20, that means it's 20% fat. You can, of course, use a leaner ground beef if you'd like. And you wanna, you wanna cook this. You want all the pink to be gone. And so now, instead of the meat going in and then us adding seasoning afterwards, the meat is beginning with tons of spice and seasoning. I love chili. I love chili. Chili feels are, it's a face steam of chili powder and a comfort food hug. And it keeps so well, like you can double this batch if you want to and stick it in the freezer. Now, we're adding the other star to chili. American chili is the kidney bean. We're gonna add those beans. I like to get them incorporated. Everybody needs a minute. Listen, the salt is up to you. This is all no salt, you could really measure it yourself, but I really, salt adds flavor. Don't be afraid of it. Now, we're gonna take this can of diced tomatoes. Every bit, listen, people worked hard to put these tomatoes in a can. And then we're gonna add a can, eight ounce can of tomato sauce. You need both because you need the liquid to work with the fat of the meat and kind of come together into one product. And I'm gonna add a little bit more black pepper. Now listen, your girl is done. It's, it's done. It's boiling now and we just wanted to take a little power nap, a little disco nap while we tend to other things. So let's put the lid on and we're gonna reduce the heat to low. All right, so we have that classic American chili happening, brewing away, it's gonna be good. But let's move on to vegetarian chili. This is a great recipe for all you vegetarians, non-vegetarians, omnivores, and just people who just love vegetables. So we're gonna take a little bit of vegetable oil, two onions. I'm an onion person, I love onions. I mean, caramelized onions, I like fried onions, I like, any type of onion. I want this to come up just a little more. I wanna hear a little bit more sound. I wanna hear my food talking to me. I want it to say, Keisha, I'm ready. Let's make this happen. I start with onions because they have the most water of all the aromatics. And so I want that water to start to come out and I want it to start to get translucent and caramelized. And it takes a little bit longer than other vegetables do. So I'm gonna put in probably about a quarter teaspoon of salt. And the other thing that I really wanna encourage you to do is, just don't cook, taste, listen, smell, all of the things. Be engaged in your cooking, you know? It's going in your body, talk to it and be with it. I'm gonna add some black pepper too. Okay, so now, let's talk about that sofrito, that sofrito action again, creating the flavor from the beginning. I now in here have the onions and the oil and the salt and the pepper, and now I'm gonna move to my spices and I'm gonna bloom. And let's start with the two tablespoons of chili powder. And you know what I love most about chili powder is it's, it's almost like a sumac to me, like it has some citrus notes to it, it's got heat, it's got spice. 
So as this chili powder is blooming in here, I'm gonna add some other ingredients. I'm gonna add cayenne and I'm gonna add cumin. Now we don't wanna get it going too long, but now look at, look at this sofrito. At this point, this is all lovely and this is when we add the garlic. Garlic needs like a minute. You know, you don't wanna kill it. You just want it to actually season your seasoning. So again, here we go. We're building flavors step by step. In cooking, things turn brown and things get all caramelized and delicious. That's what happens on the bottom of the pan and that is all flavor. It is concentrated flavor. This is when we start to make the sucker vegetarian. Okay, I'm gonna add some bell peppers. Now, I love beans. I love beans. Black beans, I make, sometimes I make a rice and bean situation that I absolutely adore. But this is when you can decide what protein you wanna put in. It could be a meat substitute, it could be tofu or seitan or a meat alternative. And so you really can make it your own. Okay, I mean, can we just, uh, uh, gorgeous, the color, all of that. Now, can of corn. We are not gonna drain this. We're gonna use the liquid because actually we need to deglaze the bottom of the pan just a little bit. Deglazing means that all of that fond we talked about on the bottom of the pan that looked like it was burned or just looked like it was too brown, that's the flavor and we wanna bring it up. We wanna create a little liquid that will loosen it and ease it up, up off of the bottom of the pan. So now, what is chili without tomato product? I'm using tomato sauce here because this is a quick dish and we don't need tomatoes to break down. We just needed to have some substance and some depth and tomato sauce does that. The last thing we're gonna add is dried oregano. And if it's older oregano, you know, you wanna, again, release those flavors. And so you just don't wanna put it in. You actually wanna be, get aggressive with it. Now, as gorgeous as the color is for this chili, you can do more. This palette here is just the beginning. You can add zucchini. I would do diced carrots in here. And it could be anything, it's any seasonal vegetable. You could finish this with spinach, baby spinach even. Oh my gosh, the other thing that I did when I was testing this recipe and I had leftovers, I took it to the beach. Since it has no meat product in it, it became a salsa. Get some tortilla strips, cold, put it in the cooler. Perfect, perfect. So now, classic American, we have our vegetarian chili. I'm gonna turn it down to low. I'm not gonna cover it, and it's gonna cook for about 20 minutes. And now, let's move on to the Dundata. White turkey chili verde. Let's go. This is for people that tomatoes are not their jam. No tomato product. We are gonna use a Dutch oven for this recipe. Why a Dutch oven? I just think it looks great. And we have more volume. We're gonna have like six cups of broth in there. So, I've got this preheated um, on a medium high heat. Feels really good and nice and hot. We're gonna add some uh, vegetable oil. I think this is two tablespoons of vegetable oil. And we're gonna start building the sofrito again. So in here I have one large onion and I'm gonna put a little pepper in it as well. This recipe calls for a poblano or any mild chili. You could use cubanelle, you could use bell pepper if you want. There's tons of chilies you can ironically use for chili. And there's too many to go through, but if you're really nerdy like me, you'll go to the spruce eats and you'll see a great piece we have on different types of chilies and their heat levels. And at this point, since it's gonna take a while, I am going to add in the minced garlic. This is four uh, cloves of minced garlic. And listen, I love garlic. I have a problem with garlic. I'm a friend, okay? I don't know how people that don't like garlic can make food without garlic. It's a cinch. And here, look, use your discretion at this. I. I think they should be a little softer and it might take a, it might take a minute. I'm gonna add, put the lid on so it can just go a little faster and we're gonna just let that go for a little bit so that they'll start to break down a little bit. I'm not an exceptional baker. I said it right there to you. Lauren is a much better baker. I will never, ever tell her though. Tell, say it to the camera. This girl can <laughs> bake, okay? You know, but I cook in, in like I cook with feeling, you know, I cook with 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 all of my senses. You can't just follow a recipe blindly and not be in your experience of what is happening. All right. Oh, see, this is what I'm talking about. So now all the liquid is starting to come out of the vegetables, and they're all marrying together. So onion and poblano peppers, and they haven't really broken down. They're still verdant. They're still green. Uh, which I really uh, appreciate about that. I would even, let's even do this. Let's even taste it for the salt level. 
because this might be the only chance that we get. Mm. Oh! The salt did exactly what I needed it to do. It's not salty, but you get all the flavors of the vegetables. Now, here we're gonna add a pound of turkey meat. So it's lighter in color, it's leaner than beef. It takes on the flavor of everything else. It doesn't have such a strong flavor. Gosh, this smells so good. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt because again, we're adding a new element to the dish. We're building these flavors up. And I'm gonna add a little bit more crushed black pepper. You know, it's all about, it's a poblano based, but this pepper adds another dimension of what pepper and heat is. Now here's the optional part. Uh, I need to get a beer. Will you pour me a cup of beer? That was exactly. never a bartender. Fact, I told you, good help, help is hard to find. Does foam count as part no, of? No, it okay. does not count as that. Okay, that's, that's a fine. good tip. That's fine. Well, thanks so much. Cheers. I'll, I'll come back once I can eat stuff. <laughs> All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a cup of beer into the pan. You wanna turn the temperature up. Let it boil for, a little, boil for a little bit so we can kind of boil up the alcohol. We want the flavor of the beer. We don't necessarily want the alcohol. Mmm, 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 mmm. Oh my gosh, that beer brings out the sweetness of the chilies. And listen, we are almost home. Now, here are my other stars of this wonderful, wonderful chili. We're gonna use white cannellini beans. Okay, we're almost there. One final ingredient is we're gonna add three cups of hominy, also known as pozole. I love it. I just love it. I could eat it like this, but we're gonna finish it with six cups of chicken broth. Hopefully it will fit into the pot, and then we are going to bring it to a boil. Come on, look at that. Isn't that nice? That's so pretty. It looks like our vegetarian chili is done. I'm gonna cut the heat off of that so it'll be ready for our chili. First of all, I mean, it's chilly, yes. But look at the visual differences in this. Like this is giving you a hearty, big bowl moment. And this is giving you green goddess chili moment, you know? And I think it's having them together is just so great for a chili party at home. And tomato base, of course, which has a little bit more acid. Some people are, do not work well with acid. Um, and this has cayenne as well, so it's, this is gonna be much more spicy than this one is. The great thing about all of these is that you can double them, triple them very, very easily and keep them in a, in a pot, in a big pot on the table and people can go, can go ham or they can go vegetarian ham. Okay, we have all three of our chilies simmering our way. We just finished that beautiful uh, chili verde. Mm. So now let's talk toppings, like the fun part, okay? So we have classic American chili. We've got vegetarian chili with corn and black beans, and we have our turkey chili verde. So how do we pull it all together? Let's start at the beginning. Classic American. Remember, this is just four ingredients, four or five ingredients. For this one, we're gonna keep it classic, classic American. My first thing is cheese, cheddar cheese, because it's usually hot enough to melt it. I do my dollop of sour cream. Then some scallion, of course, and some cilantro. I mean, look at it. So gorgeous. So gorgeous. Okay, so now the tasting. Love this. Now, there's science here. You wanna go down into the sour cream, but not, you wanna go to the middle of the sour cream. I don't blend it around like some people do. I want that. I wanna take, go down into it. See, so I have a little dibble dabble of sour cream. I got some scallion. I got the chili product. Maybe put a piece of cilantro on there. Mmm, mmm, mmm. All that work you did, well, not that much work. All that work you did, it comes right out in this product. And you would not think that this chili took 20 minutes to do. You would think you cooked it all day. It's so good. And the cheese, that little acid hit. Mm. Next up is the vegetarian. Bell pepper, onion, garlic, tomato, chili powder, cayenne. Watch that. Okay. Tortilla strips, the pepper jack. Also, you could add some thinly sliced jalapeno, fresh cilantro, scallions. I'm gonna put a little bit of sour cream on it. This is the wonderful thing about chili. Those combinations of green, white, red, yellow, purple. No, there's no purple. 
but you know what I mean. It's got a lot of color. The sour cream, I'm gonna make sure you get cheese and scallion, cilantro in there, and you wanna get a tortilla strip in there, okay? Mmm, mm-hmm, mmm. Oh, there's a, there's a cayenne. I'm not missing the meat here. Really not missing the meat here. And that sweet, that bell pepper, that red bell pepper, really, really, really gives you the sweetness that you need to kind of round out the acid of the tomato. All right, kids. I told you this was my favorite chili. This green chili verde. Love it. Oh, and you see how brothy it is? So like chicken soup, chicken noodle soup when you're cold, when you have a cold, okay. Green chili? Yes, ma'am. Haas avocado. You gotta get a Haas avocado. We're gonna take a little of this wonderful, salty, Parmesan-like cotilla cheese. We're gonna do a little scallion. I don't think this is hot enough, so I'm gonna put a little bit of um, jalapeno on it. And then some cilantro. Now, perfect bite. A Little bit of that avocado. You wanna come down through the cotilla. Mm. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. Mm -mm. The texture from the pozole, fabulous. Creaminess from the avocado, saltiness from the cotilla, the brightness of the cilantro and the jalapeno. We did it, y'all. It's been a chili party. You made three chilies, toppings, cerveza, friends, family, fun. Chili. It's elementary. So these are some of my favorite chili toppings. What are some of yours? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to The Spruce Eats. I'll see you next time.